Good evening. If you are here for the first time, I always just like to start off um, by giving everyone who likes to join live a few minutes to get on before I jump into um, our uh, scripture and prayer for the night. Um, so if you are here watching the replay, just fast forward um, a few minutes, maybe like three, two or three minutes forward. Um, and that's when I will begin. Um, my name is Candace. If you do not know, if you're here for the first time, um, I meet here live with you every Monday at 7 p.m. Um, sharing a word of the Lord concerning marriage, um, specifically for the wife, um, just to encourage, to strengthen you, to help you, um, to stay the course and to not give up. Um, I wish that I, you know, had something like this when I was in a season of, you know, uncertainty. Um, but glory be to God that he called me and he used me to um, set up a platform such as this. Um, it's called Warrior Wives of Kingdom. Um, again, I do work with women one-on-one. -on -one. Um, if you're interested um, to know more about that, you can check out my Instagram page. It's at Warrior Wives of Kingdom. Um, and I can, um, you can DM me and I will give you all of the details of that. Um, but meeting with me, Every Monday at 7 p.m. is completely free. Um, you can invite whoever you want to invite. Um, and we're simply just a group of wives meeting together um, to hear the word of God, to interact with one another, but more importantly, to make intercession for not just ourselves, but for marriages all across the nation. Because I believe that if some a video of somebody eating food can go viral, how much more would God allow his word that's helping to build kingdom marriages go forward? So I believe that as we continue to meet, um, you know, consistently, um, if you share it with somebody else, invite somebody, um, I, I truly believe that um, the word of God that he's given me will spread. And so that not just you know, it's us being strengthened, but there's, there's people all over being strengthened in their marriages um, because Unfortunately, divorce has just become a normal thing of society. Um, it's like we're desensitized to that word or it's, it's almost like we just accept it, it as a way of life. Um, but we don't have to accept it because that's not what the word of God says. He says he hates divorce. And so if God hates divorce, then that gives me hope to know that it's nothing wrong with breathing life into someone else's situation that may be seemingly dead or breathing life into somebody else's situation where there seems to be confusion and uncertainty. We don't just have to simply, um, you know, just do normalcy, accept divorce. Um, it's, it's not the end all be all. Um, and again, I know that there are situations that, um, you know, cause for people to separate themselves. Um, abuse, um, that's not tolerable, um, but I am not talking about um, abuse. Um, you know, as the Lord leads, that may be a topic, you know, of discussion, but I just want to put that out there that there, in no way, shape or form um, do I um, promote or encourage anybody to um, stay, you know, in a, in a situation where they're unsafe. So um, I am... Good evening. I was just getting ready to say, um, I always like to say hi to those that are in um, that are on live because, of course, I cannot see you, but you can see me. But if you just simply say hi, wave in the chat, I just want to say hi back. Hi, Delise. Good evening. Hi, Cynthia. And if you're wondering how I know these women by name is because they get on every week, every Monday since I've been doing this, they're on here. And so I've come to just be able to say hi to them here. So um, this is a safe uh, platform group. I'm very personable. Um, if you want to reach out to me, just go over to my Instagram page. I promise I will respond to you. Maybe you need prayer. Maybe you just have a question. Um, maybe you don't know my testimony. You can go to my Instagram page at Warrior Wives of Kingdom and watch my testimony. Listen to my testimony. And I believe that... Um, you know, I can help you to um, just, you know, maneuver some of the things that come along with um, being married because it does take work. Um, it's not easy. Um, but 
it doesn't take the work that the world has designated what that work looks like. It doesn't. And so it's just my charge to just direct you into the word of God um, to help you to see how there is an instruction manual on marriage. There is an instruction manual on rearing up children. There is an instruction manual on um, being a woman of God. You just got to read the word and then you have to allow God to give you revelation on how particular scriptures meet you where you are. Um, the word is alive. It can mean one thing today and I can read the same scriptures tomorrow and it can mean something completely different. It's because the word is alive and it's always moving. It's always, you know, activated. And so we do have an instruction manual. Um, and I say that because it's helped me. So I am, um, like I said, if you were on last week, um, I wanted to do a part two of knowing your role. Um, a lot of times we hear um, women say, or maybe we have even said, oh, I've lost myself in this marriage or I've lost myself um, behind, you know, parenting. Um, you may know women who have seemingly lost themselves. Um, and as we talked last week, if you know your role and what you're supposed to be doing, then you can't get lost. You cannot get swallowed up in other things because you'll know exactly what it is you're supposed to be doing. Um, like Jesus said, he knows where he came from and he knows where he's going is what he told the Pharisees when they would question him. I know where I came from and I know where I'm going. And so there was nothing that they could say or do that would deter or get him off track. He was, he had a one track mind. And when anything else would come that didn't line up with his assignment, he knew how to dismiss those things because he knew where he was going. And um, I believe that he wants us to know where we're going. Um, as, as moms, as wives, we got to know where we're going. Um, we can't just continue to just navigate, you know, day to day, fly by day, fly by night, um, haphazardly or unintentionally. But we have to start getting intentional because... As the world, you know, gets closer and closer to the day um, that Jesus is returning, things are getting, the, the, the heat is getting turned up. Um, if you look around the things that are going on in the world, it, it's, a, it's a lot of things that are going on that are just bring, turning up the heat, bringing on the pressure, um, testing our faith, testing our patience, um, helping us to see where our allegiance lies, helping us to see where our faith lies um, so that we can know just how strong we aren't, you know, just how faithless we are. Um, it, you know, it's a lot of these situations, um, you know, show us. And I thank God that he uses whatever he wants to use to get me to see, to get us to see the areas in where we need to come up a little bit higher, um, the areas where we need to be a little bit more stronger. Um, it's one thing to say you have faith and you believe, but then when something comes knocking at your door, is it, that's really the test of, you know, to show yourself, hey, do you do you really have the faith that you say? Um, and it's to help you to come up and elevate. And so that's what I want to do. Uh, we're going to jump right back into Proverbs 31, um, starting at verse 10. I didn't finish it last week, so I'm going to start off by just reading um, that scripture. So um, Proverbs 31, I'm going to put it in the chat. Starting at verse 10. Going to verse 27. And I'm going to pin it at the top. So if you join in late or you're watching a replay, the scripture is there. All right. So starting at verse 10, it says, you know what? I actually want to read this in... My Bible is the NIV version. I actually want to read this in the um, New King James Version. And I like the New King James Version because it actually uses the word virtuous and wife. The title in my Bible, it says the virtuous wife. Who can find a virtuous wife? For her worth is far above rubies. The heart of her husband safely trusts her. So he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not evil all the days of her life. 
She seeks wool and flax and willingly works with her hands. She is like the merchant ships. She brings her food from afar. She also rises while it is yet night and provides food for her, for her household and a portion for her maid servants. She considers a field and buys it. From her profits, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and strengthens her arms. She perceives that her merchandise is good and her lamp does not go out by night. She stretches out her hands to the distaff and her hand holds the spindle. She extends her hand to the poor. Yes, she reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of snow for her household, for all her household is clothed with scarlet. She makes tapestry for herself. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the gates. When he sits among the elders of the land, she makes linen and garments and sells them and supplies sashes for the merchants. Strength and honor are her clothing. She shall rejoice in time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom and on her tongue is the law of kindness. In verse 27, she watches over the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. And amen, I thank you for the reading of his word. If you don't read anything else, if you don't know anything else, um, if you have any questions or you just don't know where to start in, in, you know, in the midst of all that goes on around you and in your life and in your house, I'm encouraging you to make Proverbs 31, starting at verse 10 through 27, the foundation of who you are as a woman, who you are as a wife, who you are as a mother, because it literally lays out what we should be, what we are. Um, because like I said last week, God will never put something in his word that we're unable to obtain. He will never tell us to be something or point us in the direction of something that we are not. And so I just want you to perceive that you are, and I just want you to declare at your mouth, I am a virtuous wife. Say it. I am a virtuous wife. God, thank you for creating me to be a virtuous wife. And I want you to declare that every day that you are a virtuous wife. When you get up in the morning, I am virtuous. And so anything that comes that is not a virtue, you can just dismiss it because God already declared that we're virtuous, right? And I just want to read the definition of virtuous. Or a virtuous woman, per se. A woman of virtue is a woman who is prepared to fight. How ironic is that? I found that online. A virtuous woman is a woman who is prepared to fight. She's a woman who's prepared to do the work. She's a woman that is prepared to, by any means necessary, take care of her family. That's her job. And how do I know that? Because literally in this, in this scripture, in the verses that I read, everything that she does is pertaining to her family. And the most important part that I like is that she's not doing it looking raggedy. She's not doing it beat down. She's not doing it wore out. She's not doing it complaining. But she's doing it is because she's doing it because it's who she is. It's her role. It's her job. Um, in my profession, you know, I'm an auditor. I don't show up to work trying to fry chicken and getting frustrated because I can't fry this chicken. No, that's not my role at my job. My job is to audit. <laughs> and it's the same thing with the things of God. Like if he says that this is what we are and we were created to help. And then there's a scripture that's literally line by line showing us how to be helpers. Then that's what we should be doing. Anything else outside of that, two things anything outside of that are the extra things that God allows you know us to be involved in because he's a loving God he wants us to enjoy our life he's an abundant life and then the second thing is there are there they may be things that have just come to distract us from actually operating and being virtuous wives and like I said last week 
the world, and I, and I, I won't even say the world, society is literally like the person standing on the shore of a beach who put their feet in just to get wet a little bit, but then five minutes later, they turn around and the shore is all the way back there and they're all the way. Society needs, needs to bring it back in. We just need to bring it back in to the shore so that we can stay grounded on the, and focus on the things that we're supposed to do. They're not meant to come to frustrate us as wives and as mothers. And I'm just go back to the scripture, right? My husband is supposed to have full confidence in me. Full confidence. I don't bring any harm. I'm supposed to bring good all the days of my life. What does that mean? Sometimes I might have to zip my lips. You know, sometimes when something is on my heart and mind, I'm going to have to pray about it. I'm going to have to tell God about it. The word says to go to him to for venting. Because if we vent, if we let it out to a human, it's, it's not going to come out righteously. It is going to lead to unrighteous anger. And so if I have something that I want to bring, if we have things that we want to bring to our husband's attention, we need to take him to God first. He's our first husband, right? And we're just going to go through this thing line by line real quick. Think about ways in which you bring harm or you bring dysfunction or you bring confusion or you, br you, know, you bring all of your frustrations to the table and they come out like vomit on your husband. The word says here that we're supposed to bring good and not harm. So sometimes that means, hey, I know that maybe I, I'm, I'm, I'm validated in how I feel. I'm validated in this. But do I need to bring it to him right now? The answer is probably no. There's, most of the time, it's things that can wait. Majority of the time, is things that we need to take in prayer. Because when we take them to God in prayer, it's a peace that he gives us in our frustration and anger. And then he allows the words to come out like perfume. He allows the words to come out like a peace. He allows it to be where our husbands are responsive and receptive to what we're saying. Versus when we just go to them, yeah, 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 you know, you didn't do this and uh, and this is happening and the kids that and this and that. And now you find yourself arguing, right? So bringing good and not harm. Sometimes that's a sacrifice. Sometimes it's a sacrifice. Sometimes you say, oh, they don't deserve. But sometimes you just got to be that, vir you are a virtuous woman. I'm not going to say you have to be. No, you are a virtuous woman. So your role is, okay, I'm not going to bring this right now. I'm going to wait until the Lord allows me to release it in a more pleasant way. And that's something that you have to be in prayer about. It's not easy. This is tip number one. This is about being warriors. How do you be a warrior? Write this down. Tip one, go to God in prayer before I bring up, you know, conversations with my spouse. You may not have intended it to be an argument. You may not have intended it to go left. And then when it does, you're all out of sorts. So seek God first. That's tip one. Seek God first before you have a conversation with your spouse about controversial things. Hi, Teresa. How are you? Good evening. We're in Proverbs 31, verses 10 through 27. I'm on verse 13, and it says, she selects wool and flax and works, works eager with her hands. And 14 says she is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. 15, she gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. Contrary to what society believes. Listen, we are to, we are to be grocery shopping, bringing in the food and preparing a meal. Not as servants, not as maids, not as Cinderella's, because I know I'm talking to some moms and they just feel like, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm, I'm always slaving or I'm doing this or I'm doing that for the kids. Okay. Do you know that cooking, and I've said this before, is an is, is opportunity not for you to get in worship, but for you to pray over this food, for you to minister as you're making this food, for you to sing over this food, whatever you want to do, in this food, if you can put salt and pepper, seasoned salt, garlic pot powder, and all that stuff in the food, how much more in the spirit can you pour the things of God 
into the food. And I know we never thought of it that way, but one day the Lord gave me that revelation. And you know what I do while I'm cooking? Lord, I know that I have made meatloaf time and time again. You know, I got the recipe down pat. But I don't rely on my own self as I make this, Lord. I want this to touch the souls and the hearts of my husband and my children. I want them to feel your love. I want, the, I want to make this with love. I want to make it with patience. I want to make it with endurance so that they, they, they receive it through the food. If you believe in voodoo and witchcraft and all those things, stuff that you can't see, how much more should you believe that you can speak a thing over your meal and that it will not take control of your family and, and you know, the things of God? And so sometimes I use that, that opportunity, especially when I'm cooking. I don't know why I always think of it when I'm cooking, but I, I literally speak over that food. I let God come and meet me in that moment. And listen, to me, sometimes cooking is fun. Sometimes you don't feel like it, but sometimes, most of the time for me, cooking is fun. I'm not outside axing wood. I'm not outside moving cinder blocks from this. I'm not outside sweating and, and working and beating myself down at a hard job. No, God's given us women pretty creative and fun thing, you know, jobs that we he can meet us in and that we can put us into our families. And remember, I said last week, you got to get creative. Homemaking is, is for you to show your love and expression and in, in your creativity. So it's literally you putting your love into action for your family. And so you can get creative with your cooking. How many people go on Pinterest? You go on TikTok. You watch reels about, oh, new recipes and stuff. That's creativity. You, you see a new recipe. You're like, oh, man, I, my family will probably love this. Try it out. It's your opportunity that God has given you to be creative in, with, within your family and for you to express love in a fun way. We just have to look at it in a fun way. And I said last week, we just have to change our perspective on these things. Society has kind of, not kind of, it has distorted the role that we play in our homes. And it makes us feel like it's a, a we do it grudgingly sometimes. You know, we do it um, with no intent sometimes, you know. Sometimes you just throw the hot dogs and the beans in there and you tell them, you know, you tell them to come eat. But no, God wants to meet you even in that moment because you're a virtuous wife. Amen. The part that stands out to me is that she gets up while it's night. Now, this is something that I'm still working on. <laughs> I'm still working on it. But glory be to God. I understand why a woman of virtue has to get up while it's still night. And then it's, it goes on to say she doesn't go up. She does not her lamp does not go out by night in verse 18. So in 15, it says that she gets up while it's still night. And then 18 says her lamp does not go out at night. So to me, it confirms that I'm supposed to get up earlier than my family. So I can start not just jumping into the task and the things that we do to get our house together. No, but rising up early to pray over your family. They're get, they getting ready to get up and go out into their different directions in the world. You're their spiritual covering in the house. So while they're up getting ready, you shouldn't be laying in the bed with your with the covers over your head, telling, you know, giving orders or whatever. You should already be up. You the atmosphere should already be set in your home for the day. While it is yet night. What time is that? I don't know. You'll have to seek the Lord, you know, for the time that you should rise and you know the time that your family gets up and get, you know, out and about. So just being practical for me, if I know that my kids have to wake up at 630 to start getting ready so they can catch the bus at 715, then I probably should be up somewhere between what, 435 a.m. I should be up getting myself together, making sure that my prior priorities are in order, seeking God so I can get the strength that I need and the, and the instructions that I need for my family and then so that I can cover them in prayer. Uh, I was watching something today and um, it was a little clip and um, the young lady was talking about how witchcraft is real. But that's not what caught me. What caught me is that she understood her assignment. She said she don't play about her family. She says she finds scriptures and she finds things that she speaks each and every day 
over her family, over her husband. She speaks these things over her kids, her house. She says she puts sticky notes up just so she can say, you know, whatever the scripture is, so she can declare things over her family. And I thought to myself, if the things of, 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 of darkness and principalities and wickedness are always at work, they don't stop. They don't change up. They're always at work. That's why the Bible tells us to um, always be alert and stay alert. If these things are always at work, how much more than do we all need to always be at work praying over our families and covering them every day, every day? We should be declaring, we should be decreeing, we should be binding, we should be loosening over our husband and over our children and over our house. That it's a house of peace, that it's a house of love, that we invite the, the spirit in. You know, our husbands, you know, they may pray, but how much more of a virtual wife is praying and she's inviting the presence of the Holy Spirit and giving him permission to come in early in the morning before everybody get up. It's our job. It's our job. It's right here in the word. It's our job. And at nighttime, yes, our husbands make sure that the house is locked up and, you know, things are in order. But when everybody goes to sleep, we should be up. You know, whatever that looks like. Self-care for you. Praying. Thanking the Lord for the day. If you, all your family came home safe, you thank him. And then you seek him for your instructions for the next day. You, if you're, if you have a business, you, you work on your business. If you, it, your lamp does not go out at night, right? It says that she invests her earnings. She invests them. She finds ways to make gain for her family. She's always, she's creative. So to me, she's creative. And not only is she creative, she's always working with her hands. She's always at work with her hands. She's always doing something. She's always busy. Not busy at her natural job. Not busy hanging out with friends. You know, not busy going to get the hair done. Not busy shopping. She's not out busy. She's doing, she's busy doing things that's going to profit her family. Naturally, but more importantly, in the spirit and in the kingdom. That's our job. And I know some people may think, well, it's more than like than just prayer and reading and, and doing all those things. Jesus said that he is about his father's business. He was about his father's business. Yeah, there's life to live. And yes, I thank God. He gives us the opportunity to experience fun moments. That's because he's a loving God. But when it's all said and done, the word is first, the word is last. It's going to be, it's the first thing that was here. It's going to be the last thing standing. So what's most important? And listen, these things don't even have to take long. You, when she's up in the morning, she probably gets all these things done. And so she can do the things that she enjoys because it tells me here that she makes clothes. She's dressed in fine linen. So to me, I'm think. I mean, hair is done. Her clothes are nice. She still finds time to take care of herself. It doesn't say neglect yourself. No. It doesn't say that. It says she speaks with wisdom. Faithful instruction. She seeks the Lord. She watches over the affairs of her household. And she does not, she's not idle. She's not idle. She's not sitting down binge watching when her spirit is telling her, go pray. Go spend time with your children. Go show them an act of love. Go show them an act of kindness. Go see what your if your husband needs anything. She's not doing that. All those things in this timing, but the household comes first. And so I just pray that you just continue to meditate on Proverbs 31. Don't look at it as, as this unattainable woman. No, you you are this the character, this character. This 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 lays out your character. And so your prayer, my prayer tonight is going to be that we begin to establish the, the godly characteristics that we should have and throw off of the ones that the that society has put on us. The things we picked up from our moms, things we picked up from generations, things that's just been handed to us that we just accepted out of ignorance, out of not, you know, just not knowing. And I just thank God that he's revealing to us today uh, what we are, we're helpers and what we are to be and what that help looks like. And so I'm going to go into prayer. Um, Heavenly Father, I just thank you for your love. I thank you for your grace. 
um, I acknowledge you as the one who was seated on the throne in heaven. Lord God, I just thank you that your love and I leads us, guides us, counsels us, oh Father God, instructs us and gives us revelation day to day. Lord, I ask that you give us open ears and a heart to receive what you have said. The seeds you have allowed to be planted, oh God, I ask that you allow them to take deep root in our lives and in our marriages, that we will begin to see fruit, Lord God. I bind up the spirit of the enemy that will try to come and sow doubt or discord or put a comma where you have put a period. I don't care what season your marriage is in. Hallelujah. I don't care what season you may find yourself in. It starts with you. So, Lord God, I ask that you allow the anointing of the virtuous wife to lay, oh, Father God, on us, God. For those that are to be wise, who 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 desire to be wise, those, those that are wise, God, and those that know wives, they'll begin to lead them and teach them as tight as your, your word says that we are to teach. The older women are supposed to teach the younger women and the younger teach the ones under them to show how to love our husbands, to show how to take care of the house, to show how to take care of the kids, oh God is the foundation that you have laid for the virtuous wife. Lord, forgive us for just unknowingly going so deep off into the shore that we forgot what we're supposed to be doing, Lord God. You created us to be helpers, Lord. Help us to be just that. No more or no less, oh God. So that everything else will begin to fall into its rightful place. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. So many marriages have gotten off course because our eyes are so caught up in what society says. Our eyes are so caught up in what has been done and what's being done. But Lord God, I ask right now that you allow your word, this word, that you allow to come forth to reach the hearts and minds of marriages all across the world, Lord God. I make intercession, Lord, that you begin to just show women around the world the foundation of who they are and who you created us to be. That we won't look to the right, we won't look to the left, we won't look to social media, we won't look to those around us of, that seemingly have this influence, oh Father God. Lord, I even ask that you, oh God, allow us to put down idols, things we've made idols, women we've made idols, that don't even, who don't even line up with your word, oh God. But help us to keep our eyes and put our eyes on those women that are older than us, that are younger than us, that's going to lead us into the path of righteousness, that's going to lead us into the paths of which your word tells us to do. And Lord, I don't know about anybody else, but I want to do what your word tells to do, tells me to do. I want to be who your word says I'm to be. Lord God, help us to put off old mindsets. Help us to put off false mindsets, God. Help us to put off our opinions and trying to put a but after everything that you say, Lord God. I come against that. Help us to just accept it for what it is, Lord. Just like we expect our children and younger people to listen to us when we speak. Lord God, we don't want them to say, but help us to stop saying, but to you. Help us to stop giving excuses to you, Lord, in our marriages. But help us to just be and do what you told and said us to do. And just trust that everything else will fall into line. Help us to not look at our spouses, Lord God, and what they're doing or what they're not doing. But help us to just be the example of a virtuous wife, to be the example, hallelujah, of what holiness is, Lord. To be the example, oh Father God, of your spirit, of your love, of your grace, of your mercy, even when we may think it's not deserved, Lord. Help us to just be merciful and gracious each and every day. Hallelujah, Lord God. Lord, let your spirit just feel marriages right now, Lord God. It is a need, Lord God. And there's people who don't even know to, to ask you. They don't even know they need you, but Lord God, I know they need you, Lord God. The enemy has fooled us for way too long, oh God. Let the scales be pulled from our eyes, Lord. Let the plugs be pulled out of our ears, Lord God. And I even ask that you be the gatekeeper of our lips that we shut our mouths sometimes and just open our ears to hear what you're saying because, oh God, there's something that you want to do for each and every one of us, oh God, in our marriages, Lord God. You are a God of excellence. You are a husband of excellence. 
So why, oh God, do we accept less than in our marriages? Hallelujah, Lord God. Let your excellence flow. Let your love flow. Lord, I pray a special prayer over husbands tonight, Lord God, where the enemy has come and distorted their idea of what a man and what a husband is and what he should be. Lord God, I ask that you turn husband's feet into the path of righteousness, into the path of truth tonight, Lord God. Break them free from the captives of the enemy, oh God. Break the chains, oh Father God, from them, Lord God, that they will get in godly order in the name of Jesus. But while you're working on our husbands, Lord, and we know you're doing everything necessary to work on our husbands, help us to put our full trust in you, Lord God. For if you called us to it, then there's no failure. If you called us to it, then it has to prosper. If you called us to it, then fruit has to be produced, Lord God. So just give us the strength that we need to stay the course, Lord. And once again, help us to stop putting a comma where you have put a period, Lord God. I thank you for every wife that's represented on here tonight. For every woman that's represented on here tonight. Those that will even watch the replay, Lord God. I pray a special blessing. For them coming and just hear what thus saith the Lord. That they will, oh God, get the confirmation they need. That they will get the, the specific instruction and correction they need for their homes. And so I just thank you, oh God, in advance for what you're going to do. I thank you for the testimonies that are already being formed. I thank you for the marriages that are being transformed. I thank you for the transformation of the mindset, oh God. And I thank you for a renewed vision tonight. I give you name praise, I give you name honor, and I give you name glory. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. 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 Um, I pray that you are blessed tonight. I pray that you will read Proverbs 31. I know that it is a familiar, a very familiar verse of scripture. Um, but again, you know, like I said before, it's those familiar verses of scripture that just speak the loudest sometimes and I pray that you just reflect on the characteristics of what a virtual woman are because you're already that you're already that it's not something that's too hard for you to do it's, it, it just ask in prayer ask the Lord to just change your perspective and then ask him to show you where you're already operating in these things it's all for the preparation of the big wedding okay we're just here passing through we're just here practicing, you know, this marriage. This is not the end all be all, okay? The great wedding is to come. And I want to be I want to be prepared. I want to be like the 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 the, the 10 virgins. I want to be the prepared one. I want to already have my my oil, my lamp is going to be already filled with all of these nuggets that he has given me so that I can be the wife. The body of Christ so we can be the wife that we're supposed to be to the Father for eternity. Our reward is not here on earth. It's in heaven. This is just practice. This is just training. This is just preparation for the true marriage. The true, when the bridge room comes, when Jesus comes to get his bride, let's get prepared. And I know, I love my husband. I know we love our husbands. I know, listen, Continue to love them. Pour out your love. Pray for them. Encourage them. Prepare yourself for the husband. Prepare yourselves. Let your husbands prepare him themselves for the wedding. The wedding, okay? Don't focus on what's happening. I know I know. sometimes it's hard when you're going through a rough patch. I know. Y'all know my story. I've been there. But just rest assured, two things. That what God promised, he's going to do. He's not going to go back on his word. And two, if you don't enjoy it now, and you're, you're going to enjoy it in heaven. He is, gonna, he is a God of restoration. How do I know? He showed me that. So he is going to restore. He's going to allow you to experience everything you are supposed to experience. Just stay the course. Keep trying. If you didn't get it yesterday or today, try it tomorrow. But just keep on trying and just keep on pressing and just don't give up. 
is not for this life. It's for eternity. Jesus is soon to come. And so it's just time for us to take our eyes off of the natural and put our eyes in the spirit and press through. If Jesus had to press through what he pressed through, he, God is not even making us do anything compared to what Jesus had to go through. And if he had to press through that, how, we got to press through it too. Each and every day, we just got to press through it. We got to pray when we upset. We got to pray when we confused. We got to pray when we don't understand. We got to pray when we feel doubt. We just got to keep pressing for the wedding day. The wedding day. And Lord God, I just thank you for your word. Um, amen. Um, this blessed me. It encouraged me and it blessed me. And I just um, thank God. I pray that um, you receive the same um, again, if anybody has any prayer requests um, for yourself or somebody you may know, you just want me to keep their names in prayer as I pray for marriages, um, I can keep their names specifically in prayer. Um, if you have questions or um, you want to know more about my one-on-ones, DM me on Instagram. Um, some of you have my number, DM me. I mean, text me. <laughs> and, you know, um, because I believe that the, the Holy Spirit is literally, and not just in marriages, but he is connecting us to the resources and the people we need so that we can continue to press on and so that we can make it into the kingdom. There'll be no excuse. He's sending help. Everything that you pray for and you believe for, he, send, he sends an answer and he sends help because he wants us to make it in. Hell was not made for us. And so with that being said, if you know somebody, it should be, I'm not about numbers. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to worry about numbers, but there should be more women on here. There can't just be a handful of people who don't know what to do or needs help. No, the world needs help. And so there should be more people. So if you know somebody that is married, and I'm not trying to be anybody's pastor or anything like that. I'm, I don't have a church. You know, I'm not trying to do any of that thing. I just want to encourage and uplift because it's true and it's the word. So invite somebody to come, even if they just come on next Monday as a, as a guest, just invite one married woman that you know, um, because you just never know. You never know. Um, so I just thank you. Good night, everybody. I pray that you have a blessed and wonderful night. Um, until um, next time. And you want to be on because I have an announcement next Monday. Maybe that'll help you invite somebody. I have an announcement on Monday at 7, okay? Um, so make sure you're on at 7 because that's when I'm going to announce. I'm going to jump right in. Um, you are so welcome, Josie. Again, she's somebody that gets on, you know, every week. So I can call her by name, Josie. Thank you, Teresa, for getting on, Delise and Cynthia. And if anybody else is on... Um, and you didn't say hi in the chat, that's fine. Greetings to you. Blessings to you. And um, I will see you next week. You're so welcome um, and good night.